serves us to be safe. Have fun doing whatever you're doing. All right, so vertical first here. Um, in the interest of time, we're using my numbers. Oh, okay. What do you all want to launch off the building? A watermelon. How did you know? Why did you say watermelon? Because at Lorchard, they took a watermelon and they dropped it off at the top of the hill and thank you. Okay, because on my notes, I have how high will the watermelon go? <laughs> they really did it. Mitchell and uh, Mitchell and some kids were about to forget his name. Yeah. They take a big watermelon to the top, and what they do is they go on the lift to like spray it out. Move on the Wait, they went to the elevator? Up they the went elevator? all the way to the top. Oh. They got on there, they climbed up to the top, they yeah. took a that video. They killed someone. They, 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 they took a video. They took a video of it, and Mitchell was videoing, and the other kid dropped the watermelon, and you just saw the thing go. Pow! <laughs> 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 I think it would look like it went up. It just went. Pew! <laughs> 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 it didn't go up. It went down to about. Okay. That's why I thought watermelon. Okay. When was this? How long ago was this? Uh, this was during the summer. During the summer. So. That's just really freaky that you would say watermelon when somebody else is. Do you want to ask Mitchell the watermelon velocity and acceleration I'm and everything? <laughs> you should talk to him at the next. He probably time. calculated it. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell, he's like as he was going up, the, he, as he was like taking the. Now that this is two minutes of Felix time. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Caleb. <laughs> I don't know that I want, oh shoot, sorry Caleb, okay. Um, but I don't want to, if, if, where they just dropped it, what's the velocity if they just dropped the watermelon? How fast is it moving at the moment it was dropped? Zero. So that makes velocity in our formula become zero, and I don't know that I really want to do that one. So we're going to shoot it up in the air and then let it come back Maybe down. Maybe they could just throw it up in the air. Okay, fine, we threw it up in the air. So it's going to go up and then it's going to come down. So right. And it, so it went up at 39.2 meters per second. However, they threw it, launched it, whatever they did to it. They have a watermelon thrower. I don't know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and 98 meters tall. Yeah, okay. So I have several I have several questions here. We actually yes, we're going to want to figure out how high does the watermelon go and how fast is it moving when it hit the ground. Okay. So we have several but before you as you'll recall back when we did these in December, before you do anything, you need to get the equation set up immediately. And I actually want to show you that now you don't even have to remember the old formula we've ever used. You guys can start from acceleration. Because since this is a go up and going up and down in the air, what do we know acceleration of the watermelon is? Yeah. We know gravity, if we're on Earth, we know gravity is constant. So if you're doing anything that's going up and down with gravity, you immediately know what acceleration is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you would know acceleration is a constant, maybe at 9.8. It is not a variable. So you would already know your acceleration function. How would you get velocity? And now we're going to integrate to go backwards, so we would integrate this. Now, realize our variable in this situation is time, it's not x's, so when you integrate you're using t instead. What they ask you for again? Well, at the moment, I just want you to get the formulas, then I'll ask you the question. So if I said what's velocity, you guys would go, oh, well, okay, if I integrate negative 9.8, what do I get? 9.8 t, thank you, plus c, your constant. You have to stop and solve your constant. And this is where in the real world you have to stop and go, well, okay, I need some place where I knew the velocity and the time. Yeah. yeah, in this case, if they give you a zero, we do know that. So the velocity was 39.2 at time zero. So that would make that whole thing zero. And gosh, I guess we solved for c. Now, I could also go, I could have told you that 
the velocity was 20 meters per second after two seconds. I could have given you something like that. I don't have to give it to you at time zero. That's the most common, but it's not a requirement. So now your vo velocity equation is negative 9.8 t plus 39.2. That your velocity formula you're going to need to come back and use multiple times here. So now I need the position equation. How do I get position? I do another integration, okay. So if I do another integration to get position, I'm going to get, yeah, it's going to be 9, I'm going to have to divide by 2 here. So it's going to come out to 4, be 4.9. Plus 39.2t plus constant. Okay, so that's going to be negative 4.9t squared then. And now I have to solve C on this one. So once again, you must stop and ask yourself what's a position and a time that I know in this problem. Okay. Since we launched it off the top of the building, then yeah, it is going to be 98 meters high at the moment at zero seconds. So if you got if you know the initial speed, with initial position, and initial velocity. T is zero. T is zero. So C is going to turn out to be 98. And, and if some of you are sitting there going, but I already knew this. Yeah, you did. So let me get this written out. Then I'll tell you. So 39.2 T. Thank you. It's exactly that. What we just derived is what you used to have to memorize. Half that squared plus bot plus O. And you got it. That's the same old position equation. Now, that long assumes long as long as I'm nice and I give you the values at the moment it started. But on these problems, I would have to give you at time zero. I could tell you a position and a time somewhere in the path of its motion. So, it's not always going to be at time zero. Okay. Once you get the equation, now you can answer any problem they ask you. You've got everything you ever needed to know. We've actually done this part um, quite a few times. If I ask you how high will it, it, the watermelon go, okay, you ask yourself, what do I know about its highest point? Yeah. Yeah. Ask yourself up here, do I know the time, the position, or the velocity at that location? I don't know how much time it takes to get there. I don't position, I don't know how high that is, but do I know the velocity at the moment it reaches the highest point? Velocity is zero. It stops for a second and comes back down. So you, in that case, since you know velocity is zero, which equation do you want to use? Zero equals negative 9.8. Yeah. So you'll go get your velocity equation and put zero in it. So yeah, we'd have zero equals negative 9.8t plus 39.2, and you're going to solve it. Well, it's not a bit rigged, but it happens to come out when you divide it exactly four. Okay, <laughs> they don't always come out that nice. Okay, now, does that answer the question? Because that's time. So that's telling you it's taking you, it takes it four seconds to go up. Okay, because... I now, what I actually want to know is how high it went. Which equation is how high it is? Position. So now you would go get position and put the four seconds in there. And that comes out to 176.4. I don't know who this water is. And so, uh, they got a launcher. Because they launched it up, you know? Unless it's a really little watermelon, like a baby watermelon. That's You have to be throwing it like this, unless you are, like, depending on the depth of the It's one of those cannon-like 
things they shoot the teachers out of. Okay, so then the other question is, when it hits the ground, if you happen to be a, well, we're doing hit the ground, if it's going to hit somebody, we'd have to say how high they are, but how fast is it moving when it gets back to the ground? Okay, so you have to ask yourself, all right, so if I launched this puppy, it went up, it came down, what do you know down here at ground level? And it's always the same thing. Do you know the time, position, or velocity? Yeah, don't you know position is zero because you're at the height of zero? So if you know position is zero, you have to use which equation? You have to use the position equation, and so yes, you would have to go zero equals the position equation. Okay, so yeah, and in the interest of time, can I not use the quadratic formula? <laughs> No, I don't want you to forget how to do math. Oh, P, thank you, yes. Sometimes, some, some of these, some of them will factor, but a lot of times it's going to be quadratic formula. This one actually factors. Yeah, if I pull, if I pull out negative 4.9, actually, it'll be, as soon as I'm pulling, it'll be a minus, I'm pulling out a negative, so it'll be a negative it ends up being 8p minus 20. And, okay, so what are my factors of 20 that will get me an 8? 10 and 2, there you go. p minus 10, p plus 2. 10 or negative 2 and... Yeah, we are going backwards in time. That's not logical. So, okay. Uh, so, actually, actually, that two seconds is how long it would have taken it to fall off the building to the ground. Yeah. So it's going to take it ten seconds to go up and come down. But that hasn't asked you the question: How fast is it going? So what do you do when you get? You have to put that in velocity to find out how fast you're moving. So you'd have to go, so what's the velocity at 10 seconds? And then we go back and get our velocity formula, which was the negative 9.8 times t plus the 39.2. You'll discover when you add that together, it's, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does, negative 58.8. Okay, why is it negative? Yeah, it indicates the velocity is going downward. And that would be 58.8. What's per what? Per yeah, meters per second is how fast it's moving at a time. And as Alex was doing a rough multiplication by three, you could turn that into feet per second. Yes, you see, uh, that's over 150 feet a second. You probably might notice that impact. It's probably closer. Wouldn't it be closer to 200? Yeah, it's going to be more than that. I mean, minimum. It's almost, yeah, it's almost 60. Really is almost 60, so it's closer to 180. Yeah, so there you go. Like three and a half feet around. All right, so that's today's laundry problem. I'm not scared. That's it. That's it. Okay. It's just not this week's laundry problem. I'll just get homework.